Meghna Pant is a journalist and an award-winning writer on women's rights. She joins me now from Mumbai. Meghna, we saw the depth of the religious tensions in that report. Can you talk to us about how this case has fueled those tensions? Because that is definitely playing a role in how people are reacting to the brutal rape and murder of this little girl. Absolutely. You know, the entire crime was committed uh, because of religion. We saw that the Hindu men wanted to drive out uh, the, the community and the tribe that Asifa belonged to. That's where this entire crime took place. That's why why it took place. But let's also keep in mind that most Hindus and Muslims of the region and, in fact, of the nation have condemned the murder and want the accused to be punished. There are only a handful of people, basically Hindu extremists, who are protesting against the investigation. I think humanity should prevail over all else. But the fact is that the uh, Chief Minister uh, Mehbooba Mufti and the Prime Minister will have to take due action accordingly. They'll need to take action, but just recently, India introduced harsher punishments for child rapists, including the death penalty. Is there a sense in society that this is the solution to deterring would-be offenders, or is the lawyer for the family right in saying this is just a mere distraction? You know, yes, a special ordinance had been passed to give death penalty to those who rape children under the age of 12. And these are all good things. But the fact is that this is not enough. In India, a woman is raped every 13 minutes. That means that there are 110 women who are raped per day. The actual unreported numbers are obvious obviously much, much higher. Yet the death penalty has been given in only two cases in our country's history, that of Jyoti Singh Pandey, that's also known popularly as the Nirbhaya case, as well as the Shakti Mills case. So that means only two serious punishments have been given for a crime that is committed every The fact is we suffer from low conviction rates of only 27%. Uh, men are not afraid to commit heinous rapes in India because they do not fear the consequences. Most of them think they'll get away and most of them do. They know there's a bigger probability that they'll walk scot-free than be indicted. So there's no, if there's no punishment to a crime, why will the criminals stop? So the only deterrent to rape in India is an absolute fear of the system and of harsh punishment, which should be in accordance with the committed crime. You just mentioned harsher punishments. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been criticized for his response. Let's remind our viewers of what he said just two weeks ago. I want to assure the country that no culprit will be spared. Complete justice will be done. Those daughters who have become the victim of such crimes will get justice for sure. Meghna, he's promised justice to the daughters of India, but there's an administrative issue here too, isn't there? A huge backlog in the courts and rape cases appear to be on the rise. What needs to be done now to better the situation? You know, Prime Minister Modi's party, the BJP, is facing the brunt of public anger right now. Many believe that the party had to shield the suspect in Asifa's case from pro prosecution. Uh, the Prime Minister had condemned Asifa's death, but belatedly so, and only after he was attacked and his uh, silence on the case was questioned. The fact is that the Prime Minister's promise of justice will not be taken seriously if it's not followed by action. There will be a backlash, and it's vital for the Prime Minister to handle the case very carefully as there are upcoming state elections and a general election next year. Meghna, what do you say to people, especially organizations like Human Rights Watch, who say that the death penalty is not the answer in any case, in any situation? You know, the fact is that the numbers in our country demonstrate a very, very bleak situation. Sexual violence in India has become something of an epidemic. We see every 13 minutes in our country, like I mentioned, a woman is raped. That means 40,000 women are raped per year in India. 10% of these rape victims are under the age of 14. 33% of them are under the age of 18. So crime rates against women are increasing every single year. India is, in fact, ranked third in the rape figures after the U.S. and Africa. And despite these horrific numbers, we're seeing that state machinery has been unable to punish most of the rapists and perpetrators, uh, leaving India's daughters and mothers extremely vulnerable and unsafe. There's a sense of anger and deep sense of shame among people right now. So I think uh, a lot of action will have to be taken. The fact, the, the legal system that you mentioned, the victim has to prove offence beyond a reasonable doubt. A system still gives benefit of doubt to the accused. Uh, um, we see that uh, there's only one judge for every 100,000 people in our country. The investigation agency, the prosecuting agency and the police force uh, work together instead of working separately. This means that their loyalty is not to the law of the land. Um, the Nirbhaya case, as I mentioned, there was a 3,000 uh, crore fund that was allocated to increase the safety and dignity of women. That's been underutilized. 
so India does not suffer from just a lack of laws, but the implementation of these laws. So we need to reform the penal code. We need to reform the legal system uh, and ensure that perpetrators are given uh, the kind of punishments that they duly deserve. Magna Pan, a journalist in Mumbai. Thank you. Thank you.